I did a thing yesterday. What'd you do yesterday? I can't, I don't know. Oh, yeah, like... you got a thing. Which is a tattoo. Yes. That's neat. Dan took me to, uh, the, there was a tattoo convention in New Jersey and I didn't know how to find an artist. So we just walked around until I found like the one chick in this place who like, you could probably picture what a tattoo convention looks like. <laughs> yeah. like, like it's a lot of shit that's black and in a specific font and you know. Skulls. Right. And there was this one chick that like all her collateral. Sorry. All her collateral was like this color pink. Oh. And her work was really pretty. And I was just like, I respect the shit that come to the tattoo convention where there's a Hell's Angels booth and all your shit is pink. I respect that. And she, and she was really, really sweet. And the only person that was not kind of a dismissive, condescending shit to me. Good. Yeah. I have no tattoos. And not because I really... I'm not against them. It's just I've never come... I've never come up with anything I want to that that matters enough to me to be permanently emblazoned in my flesh. You know, this is what I got. It's called a tarot brooch. Ah, oh, that, that, which is ah. it's, the, it's the oldest um, heraldic cloak pin that they found in Ireland. Um, and I have like 30 of them because my family buys them for me all the time because, you know, tarot brooch. I see what so, you did there. Ah, visual pun if you get it. But I've wanted this for years, and I figured I'm always going to be Irish as fuck. I'm not changing my name. Yeah. So it's not like it's something that won't have meaning for me down the road, you know? Okay. Well. And we made, Dan started me watching Sons of Anarchy, which, which is great, and I'm enjoying it, except that then we walked into the tattoo convention where there were, like, four different biker gangs walking around in all their gear, and the Hells Angels was doing security. And I was just like, uh... this, is, this is fine. I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> Everything's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get the intro rolling. Each week... Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the world wide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? And crazy. <sighs> you know, I I have been to Disney World a few times in my life. Um and it strikes me as a place that is despite the fact that they have you know, very strict regulations on things. They seem very lax on the whole, you're not welcome here again. It takes a quite a bit to make them say, get out and stay out. I mean, they like them dollars. The um, mouse wants your money. But our first story this week is a woman who found that threshold. Oh, they missed you while you walked out of the room. Drunk woman banned for life from Disney World for assaulting cab driver over cigarette. Okay. Walt Disney World reportedly banned an intoxicated woman for slapping a cab driver who refused to give her a cigarette and kicking a police officer. Arrest report for Ellen Francis McMillan, 53, of Brandon, Florida. Uh, she, uh, a taxi stand outside Disney's Hollywood Studios, McMillan, who was, quote, slurring her words and appeared to be unstable on her feet, asked driver Adele, uh, Mahmood for a cigarette. When he said he didn't smoke, McMillan slapped him several times. That's not a reasonable response. That, that's not, that's not going to make a cigarette appear. Right, that's not going to magically turn him into a smoker. <laughs> Disney security guard uh, Barbara uh, Somoano? Somoano. Uh, observed the assault and told police that McMillan caused a disturbance at the Hollywood Studios entrance and was a threat to guests. Or an Orange County police officer stationed at Disney World. That is a weird beat to have, being, being Orange County and stationed at Disney World. Told McMillan to sit down, but she became, quote, verbally belligerent. 
She had bloodshot eyes, an unsteady gait, and was slurring her words, and a strong odor of alcohol emanated from her facial area. Facial area. Breath? She also verbally stated she was drunk multiple times. Have you been? <laughs> I have been there. Yeah. There is something I... about getting very, very drunk that will make you tell everybody, oh, shit, I am so Oh, drunk. my God, I was, like, so drunk. I'm so fucking drunk. Why do we I, feel like, the need to verbalize okay. that? It's really I, obvious. Because it's all we can verbalize by that point. That's the it, that's the sum of our reality. Yeah. Um, I'm drunk. We should do the bit drunk sometime. No. We should just yes. get trashed and do the bit. No. 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 Fun. Okay. Report says McMillan demanded a cigarette from officers. So wait, wait, wait. She didn't get a cigarette from the cab driver. So now she's she demanded a cigarette from officers and refused to speak until her nicotine craving was met. She also would not identify herself. And when her driver's license was requested, McMillan threw her small black purse on the ground and barked, "Here!" McMillan was yelling. Street for smarts. What? You want it? Go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> Street smart. McMillan was yelling profanities as families passed by before entering a, the squad car in handcuffs. Um, she tried pulling away from the officer. While pressed up against the squad car, McMillan kicked the female officer in the leg twice. Listen, in, in the past, I have had a nick fit or two in my time. However, this is above and beyond. This was takes the cake. Fit? What? Was it a literal fit? Uh, this appears to be. Yeah, like, that's, I mean, I didn't think when they said Nick fit, they meant, like, a literal tantrum. <laughs> Give me a cigarette! Give me a cigarette! Give me a cigarette! I'm like, I'm picturing that kid from the, from the freaking uh, Looney Tunes. I want an East Egg! Give me the East Egg! Give me the East Egg! Except, give me a cigarette! Give me a cigarette! I want a cigarette! Give me a cigarette! Of all the places, like, if I think about, I'm going to go somewhere and just get fucked up. Disney World is never going to be on that list, dude. But they serve, that, that, is, that seems to me like the worst mistake they could make. They serve alcohol in Disney World. Yeah, but like, do you know how fucking disturbing it would be to get fucked up at Disney World? That would scar your psyche. Yeah. Like, think about that for a minute. They That's used horrifying. They Why? Used, I don't know if it's still there. Some maybe someone could who's actually in Florida can tell me. They used to have an area, I think it was called Pleasure Island, that yeah. had a bunch of nightclubs and stuff for drinking. And it was outside of Disney World proper. And it was a place, you know, you could that made sense to me. Yeah, it was like grown up Disney World. Right. I don't think that's there anymore. I know. I think they closed that down, which is such a shame. But and like it was there when I went when I was twenty one with my sister and my aunt. And my sister and I were twenty one and twenty five. Yeah. And, and the entire time we were in the park, my mom my aunt had mobility issues. So she had one of those ride on scooters and twenty one and twenty five, I wanna remind you, made us have one hand on the cart. So we wouldn't get lost. We couldn't go to the bathroom alone. And when we were like, oh, we want to go to Pleasure Island for the night. Well, let me tell you, that did not happen. But just one the same hand that's demanded we can't do certain things. Yeah. One hand on the cart. You should not. All I'm saying is they shouldn't have beer in the <laughs> Disney World. That seems I mean, like I a think that's why they have beer. I just don't know why you would choose to get fucked up there. I, like, I get that people want to drink around the world at Epcot because they long for the sweet release of death. But, like, at, at like Hollywood Studio, like, <sighs> imagine being really messed up and running into one of those costume characters. You're not going to be okay. You're going to vomit on Pooh Bear. <laughs> Honey pot. Yeah, I'm like then you come back. There's no coming back from that. Like you vomited on Winnie the Pooh. Oh, 
over. It's all downhill. It's like, you're done. Uh, let's move on to Schenectady, which is always fun to say. Schenectady. Um, you know, there are good practical jokes you can pull on people. Yeah. But generally, the rule about practical jokes is do not pull them on strangers. Yeah. That's asking for trouble. And especially, do not pull them on the police. Man moved Schenectady police SUV as joke is arrested. City man got into an idling Schenectady police SUV early Sunday and moved it in what he told officers was a, quote, joke. However, he soon found himself charged with multiple felonies. No prosecutor said specific allegations appear to merit a less serious charge. Incident happened just after 1 a.m. Sunday uh, when city police uh, Sergeant Adriel Linear got out of his SUV. Soon after, while Linear was nearby, Luke Palumbo, 24, got in the driver's seat. Palumbo then moved the SUV back a bit in the parking spot, then moved it back again. Then you saw what was happening. Returned and arrested Palumbo. Palumbo told police he did it as a joke. Yeah, that, that doesn't... That's not... No. That's hilarious. Um... Don't fuck with the cop car. No. That's like, that, that, that's like rule one, you know, don't fuck with the cop car. I don't even know if I would have arrested this dude so much as sat him down and tried to make me, him explain to me why that was funny. Just, why is that funny? What was funny? You moved a car. Oh my God. You do you know how free the minute you a civilian for any reason get into a police vehicle unauthorized you have just tripped the cops like alert danger danger warning danger will robinson bullshit they don't like that no i mean if if this was my friend and they were like fucking with my car. I would maybe let you know let let them get slide on that. Be like that's dumb and it's not funny, but like oh, I. Whatever. But you're not my friend. I don't know you. Um, and even like even just me, it's not. Let's not even say a cop car. Let's just say some random person. While I stepped out of my car for a second with my emergency lights on, some random person hops in and starts fucking with my car. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna run over to my car and drag them out of there. That's not going to be me going, oh, that's hilarious. No, it's going to be me. I mean, I'm probably not because I'm not a badass and I wouldn't want to get beat up by the carjacker that I assume that they are. I'm not a badass either. I'm just like, get the fuck out of my car. Yeah. I don't have much in life. Don't take my car. <laughs> I'm a wuss though. And I'm going to be like, look, if you want to steal my little car with the mother of cat's bumper sticker, like, go off. They're not going to have trouble finding it. But that's just, and that's just me. The idea that you're going to screw with the car. What gets into your head to go, tee hee hee? They're I'm armed and the cars are low jacked and they don't think that's funny. Who is, who is actively looking to screw with a cop? A lot of people, apparently. A lot of, just like. Like we had the guy that fucking parachuted into the police station. Like. I mean, white people, obviously. Yeah, because everyone else knows not to screw with cops. White people have kind of gotten away with it. Yeah. <sighs> Don't screw with the cops. YouTube comments. Speaking of screwing with cops, um, well, may, actually, this is probably screwing near cops. Um, I am a little impressed by this one. Cuffed suspects caught having sex in cop car. Kinky. While under arrest in the rear of a police car, a handcuffed Florida couple removed their clothes 
and began having sex, an encounter that was eventually interrupted when a sheriff's deputy opened the door to stop them. Around 11.40 p.m. Friday, a cop stopped a man and woman who were riding bicycles with no lights on a street in uh, Fernadina Beach. Fernadina Beach. Yeah. Uh, as the two bike, uh, bike cut, across, uh, cut across the road, they were almost hit by another vehicle due to having no lights. When questioning the suspects, uh, Megan uh, Mondanaro, 35, and Aaron Thomas, 31, patrolmen noticed they each smelled of booze, had bloodshot eyes, and slurred speech. Mondanaro, who declined to perform field sobriety tests, was busted after the deputy concluded she was cycling while impaired. The cop then turned his attention to Thomas, who subsequently arrested when he performed poorly on some sobriety tests. Um, Aaron was arrested and placed in the backseat of the vehicle with Megan, who was already arrested. While Hunter was outside his squad car waiting for a vehicle to transport them to jail, <laughs> Megan and Aaron took off their clothes and started to have sex. How? Seriously. That's impressive. They're handcuffed. Oh, from reading on, it sounds like the guy did the step through. He, he, got, he got his hands to the front. Which does make things easier. I mean, who but would... also why? Oh, it gets worse. As 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 they were being removed from the vehicle, he pulled away from a second deputy who was knocked to the ground. The naked Thomas, who was moved his handcuffed hands to the front of his body, then fled through a parking lot. He was eventually <laughs> corralled behind a cold stone creamery. That was a fun night for those guys. And if you're wondering why her face looks like that when being transferred to another car, Mondinaro uh, allegedly, quote, became violent and started kicking at a deputy. As a result uh, of being forced to the ground, Mondinaro suffered abrasions on her face. You left off her Miss Thirsty tattoo. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's not a joke. It's actually... Yeah, she has it's in the article. I also want to point out the amazing web i don't know what you call a web address like the words they use for that i know there's a term for it but i'm dumb the amazing ludinis l-e-w-d-i-n-i-s yeah. why at what point are you sitting in the back you've been busted for driving for riding a bike drunk which i didn't know was illegal by the way well yeah because if you could ride your bike drunk you'd ride your ass right into traffic and hit somebody and they'd hit I you guess, and... yeah. that never occurred to me that it's illegal to ride your bike drunk i mean because it's not a matter so much a matter of you not hitting someone else it's, it's someone else hitting you yeah it makes um, sense it just never occurred to me but your your drunk ass is in the back of a cop car and you look over at one another and go like what well, fuck Okay, let's go. That seems like one of the least sexy places to be. Think of all the things that have happened in the back of a cop car. Yeah. That is one of those places where if you shined a black light, it would cry. And like, car sex is terrible anyway. It really is. Car sex is, okay. Car sex is one of those desperate things you only have when you don't own prop own or rent right, property nowhere else to go right you can't even get a motel room like they make that shit look hot in the movies it's not it's awful it's not it's, it's really and that's not what being fucking handcuffed i mean why why are you who who just who decides it now is sexy time not only that their handcuffs are like all right well hold on let me get this no i gotta get the that's like the most awkward, awful situation. Like, you've got to be a special kind of drunk. <laughs> and I, I love her, her, her mugshot. She's even kind of, sm they're both kind of smiling. Like, no, you're in trouble, guys. Yeah, but at least they just got laid. <laughs> Don't care, had sex, right? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter, had sex. Yeah. <sighs> Just paradise by the squad car light. <laughs> it's just... Uh, all right. 
Moving on. Um, you know that whole thing about uh, they were going to get hundreds and maybe thousands of people together to all raid Area 51? Yeah. And the idea was, and I, I, the mentality was, they can't arrest all of us. They can shoot a lot of you, though. Well, leave it to a YouTuber to even fuck that up. Anyway, you don't know what kind of alien tech they have there. Maybe they can arrest all of you. A YouTuber was arrested while trying to enter Area 51 after the viral event was canceled. YouTuber from the Netherlands in search of Area 51 in the Nevada that desert was arrested t Tuesday after he and another man entered a secure government area while filming. Sheriff's office said, uh, T's Grainsnier and Gover Charles, uh, Wilhelmus Jacob Sweet. That's a name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gover Charles Wilhelmus Jacob Sweep. His name is my name too. Yeah. We're about three miles inside the site, three miles in before they were detained in question. Um, inside the men's car, deputies found camera, a phone, laptops, a drone. Grenzier and Sweep allowed deputies to review their video, which showed footage from inside the secure area. Two men appear to be some distance from what is known as Area 51, fame site synonymous with alleged alien encounters. Grains here, who goes by the name, uh, I don't know if that's Ties or Tees. I'm going to guess probably Tees. Yeah. On YouTube, has more than 730,000 subscribers on the platform. On Tuesday before he was arrested, Grains here posted a selfie on its Instagram, telling followers he was headed to Area 51. Now, again, this was, they can't stop all of us. But if there's only two of you. If there's only two of you. You, you've kind of, I mean, it. You, you've kind of failed it. And here's the really dumb part. Y'all brought a drone. You didn't have to go in. You didn't have to go in. You didn't have, you had the drone. You had yeah. the means. You have the technology. And yet... There's your dumb ass wandering around the desert, getting your butt arrested. And apparently they weren't even at Area 51. Nope, they were ways away, but they were still inside a secure area. And they it take- miles away from Area 51. They take that secure area shit serious. They do. It's yeah. not a game. There used to be, when I lived with my sister, there was an army base in the area. And there was one day, like, I was going, I had gone too far up that road. And I pulled in to turn around. And just from me doing that, like, the guy came out of his little shack with yeah. his hand sidearm, like. They don't, they don't screw around. We, we, we've got an Air Force. You. We've yeah, got an Air Force Carson. Uh, they pretty much warned us that don't try to go up Cheyenne Mountain. They, they will shoot you. <laughs> We've got an Air Force base nearby. We we know what it's like. Just why why did you what were you thinking? Twenty yeah. and twenty one. Well that explains it. Let's just call this a learning experience, shall we boys? And one of them I can't tell if he has a port wine scar or a neck tat. Like to me it looks like a neck tat of a clotta. Which is a weird choice for a Dutch kid. <sighs> well, let's go back to Florida. Like, we have a choice with this show. Back um, home. I almost respect this guy had some plan. Some kind of, a little bit of a plan. It's just it wasn't a very good one. Debbie say Florida man stole golf cart in slow getaway attempt. Oh, honey. Martin County, Florida. Florida man came out of nowhere, said he had a gun, and drove off in a stolen golf cart. Uh, according to Martin County Sheriff's Office, who say he didn't get far. 
Sheriff's office say two men were golfing at a private community course in Martin County uh, when 25-year-old Jerome Inman ran up to them. Inman told the golfers who had a gun, uh, who, who they then stole their golf cart. Video shows Inman slowly traveling across the golf course as he's followed by a sheriff's helicopter above. Like, they only go, what, like 10 miles an hour? At most, maybe 20. You could outrun a golf cart if you're yeah. really trying. You're not getting far. You're not getting... I mean, it's faster than 10 miles an hour. But if you put if you put in a little oomph, you can outrun that sucker. <laughs> Let's see. Where, where, where was it? Inman reportedly told deputies he stole the golf cart because he thought he could make a faster getaway. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, honey. They're not real cars. They're not. They're just little. They they, they are essentially great big RC cars. They yeah. have let they have lithium ion batteries. They're 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 they just the remote control is just built into it. That's the only difference. They might as well have a big key on the back. Yes. Turn. <laughs> And they had, a, and the best part is they had a helicopter, and you're driving across a golf course, which, which is all you, open land. Notoriously, right? All open land. Not going to be a lot of cover. I mean, you could dive into one of the water hazards, but you're probably going to get eaten by a gator. Yeah, because it's Florida. They live there. They don't screw around them gators. I just. Bless your heart. He, yeah, I, not the plan. He, he had an idea. It just wasn't wasn't a good one. Yeah, you tried. <laughs> you tried. Bless your heart. You tried. Uh, and finally this week, I don't know who to blame for this, but the entire thing is stupid. All of this final story is stupid. This is, this is, okay, we got like a dash of late stage capitalism with, um, what did you think was going to happen with just this? All of this is stupid. This is a stupid crime that a stupid person made. Come on. Got to copy it. Come on. Come on. There we go. Golden toilet, reportedly worth millions, stolen from art exhibit. A solid 18 karat gold toilet, possibly worth more than $4 million, that's US dollars, was stolen Saturday from an art <coughs> exhibit in the family home of Winston Churchill. The toilet, titled America, was created by uh, Maurizio Catellan. It was on display Accurate. at a... Hmm? Accurate. Yeah. It's on display at a larger exhibit featuring Catellan's work. Um, at first, they woke me up this morning with the news, Catellan said. I thought it was a prank. Who's so stupid to steal a toilet? I had forgotten for a second it was made out of gold. Didn't you make it? Um, local police said in a statement they were investigating the robbery and have arrested a 66-year-old man in connection with the incident, though he's not been charged. Um, this is, it just keeps getting stupider. We're, wait for this next part. Uh, Jess Milney, a detective inspector, told the New York Times the toilet was plumbed to the building, so the robbery caused significant damage and flooding. So it was a functional 18 karat gold toilet. A functional. Has the president of the United States been to Britain in the last week? <laughs> All right. I, you could have actually given this thing its separ a separate water supply. And you could not. Have given it water supply. What? You could have given it no water supply. Right. Who's, who are you letting over there to shit on the golden toilet? Right. 
Um, Peter Pienta, an accredited precious gold dealer in Wakefield, said the toilet could be worth more than $4 million if melted down for the gold. Um, if they had a refinery or gold smelting equipment nearby, they could it could be melted into gold bars in days, and there would be no way to trace them. They can go, really go any place that would buy a bullion. So, someone makes a toilet with enough gold to be worth $4 million. Let's just pause right there. You have invested $4 million of a precious material to make a toilet. I mean, it is. I, I get it. Did, did it, did, have you never heard of gold plating by chance? Yeah. It did, feels like the, from the last paragraph that the point of the installation was for people to use it. The toilet was installed in 2016 at the Guggenheim in New York City, and museum officials said at the time that, quote, more than 100,000 people have waited patiently in line for the opportunity to commune with art and with nature. That sounds like the idea was for people to use it. So, okay. Well, at least if they try, <laughs> if they try to, to, to fence the stuff, these gold bars smell funny. <laughs> I just, for the love of, you form it. This is so late. I, I, I'm like, so half the people are going, it's for art's sake. I'm sitting here going, people be hungry. Yeah, but. Four million dollars. Art, man. Fuck art. Do you wait? This is not like you take something with everyday objects and you make something and suddenly it's worth four million dollars. That's so I, I can get that. I can get behind that. You know, even if it's like some Banksy bullshit, I kind of can process that. This is you took something worth four million dollars just to do this. I think that is the point, though. I think that is the point, that, like, the statement is America takes our vast resources and uses them for shit. Except you have taken, you, not America, have taken vast resources that could go to actual real people and done this. And that's the irony? That's the bullshit. No, that's the person shit. Who? You deserve to have your toilet stolen. I'm sorry. Fuck you. Redistribute the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie should change his, his slogan. <laughs> toilet redistribution. You deserve this. You, you, you. I mean, I get it. I, I I absolutely get what he was going for, and it works. I don't know that it's a responsible allocation allocation of resources, but the message works. Thank you, Sammy Mills in the channel says ironic capitalism is still capitalism. Yeah, yeah. Because this this is actually <sighs> like you're doing the thing you're commenting on. Exactly. Redistribute the toilet. I'm going to stand by that one. <laughs> I think we have an episode title, you guys. You you just you deserve to have this stolen. I hope they melt it down. Did he get it out of there? Is my question. Grit. <laughs> like, how did somebody rip an 18 karat gold toilet out of a wall? Gumption. Which, like, <laughs> Toilets are heavy. Solid gold is heavier. And I feel like an 18 karat gold toilet would attract some attention. That's not a thing you normally see people carrying around. 
That is, you know, again, they deserve that toilet. Good on them. I I have yeah, OSHA's it's eleven. The article talks about how they can melt it down and sell it. Mm-hmm. How do you know they want to? Like maybe Banksy did this just so he can use it because it's Banksy. <laughs> no, y'all does it. You, you make a freaking eighteen karat gold four million dollar toilet. Let somebody steal that shit. If they can get away with it, good right. on them. I mean. Good job pulling that off. Yeah, I'm listening. I want to see the I want to see the Ocean's Eleven movie <laughs> about the gold toilet heist. Melissa's pointing out that gold is really easy. It's soft metal. It's easy to cut. Yeah, shit. They could have just ripped it out of the wall. Do you are I'm gonna sp- speaking from experience. Do you know how easy it is to rip pipe out of out of uh, home construction? Drywall is not exactly, it's not stone, you guys. It's not even wood. You can no, get through dry. Hey, you can get through drywall really damn easy. At current I... exchange rate, four million USD works out to one hundred and sixty-seven pounds of gold. And that's the thing, like, that's very heavy to transport, Ugh. and also very notable to be transported. Tusk says Ocean's number two. Oh, it's terrible. So I, th- that's, I want to know how they got it out of there. Gumption. I mean, they didn't stuff it down their pants. <laughs> so the first thing we learned, like, we learned this week is um, if you make a golden toilet and someone steals it, good. <laughs> you've kind of you've kind of made your own bed there. The art has become, like, the the reaction has become the art. Uh, We have learned that um, golf carts, not a good getaway vehicle. Not that fast. We have learned if you are going to use the cover of a crowd to avoid getting arrested, two is not a crowd. (laughs) No. Two's company. Three's a crowd. You need three. Yeah, what's the old, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the other guy. Um, We have learned one of the least sexy places on earth is the back of a cop car. Yeah. And yet. And yet. Yeah. And yet drunk contortionists going to party. We've learned that uh, police are not really down with your practical jokes. That's not a thing they're big on. Don't fuck with the police car. Don't fuck in the police car. 